Hey, Grady here. I just finished recording this episode with Ryan Shoup of Ryan Shoup and the Rubber Band. We talk about the Atonement of Christ and really try to tie that into Christmas since this is really a Christmas time lesson and how light the world will help us to appreciate Jesus Christ better, help us to be more like him and help to spread the the joy that comes through Jesus Christ and, and his mission, his atonement and his life and really how, you know, without the atonement of Jesus Christ, Christmas really doesn't mean anything. Welcome, welcome, everybody, to another episode of the Third Hour of Power. My name is Grady of This Mormon Life, and this week I'm joined by Ryan Shoup. Ryan, how's it going? I'm doing just fine and dandy. I think I'm a little underdressed. You've got, like, on a button shirt, and I've got some T-shirt on. I, I Five <laughs> minutes ago, I was wearing a T-shirt, my blue T-shirt, and then I ate spaghetti. And I knew I was going on the internet, so I had to put on another shirt over it because there's some stains going on it's here. So, so strange, because I had on a, a suit and tie, and then I ate spaghetti, and then I had to take it <laughs> off in reverse t-shirt. <laughs> yeah, so. <laughs> well, Ryan, for anyone who might not be familiar with you, why don't you just give us an introduction about who you are and what you do? Well, uh, my name's Ryan. My last name is Shoup. Uh, I play in a Good. band. Uh, mo- most people would know me because I play in a band, Ryan Shoup and the Rubber Band. It's kind of like a rock bluegrass band, and uh, you know we travel all over the country. We've had some, some uh, you know big hits on the radio, and you know done a bunch of music videos and all sorts of stuff. So it's kind of where we we're at. You know we we always have a bunch of shows all over, and they're lots of fun. So uh, they're good for the family, and you know for the, for everybody. And so that's that's where everybody probably would know me from. Good. I love that. I love the idea of having like family friendly entertainment. Um, you know, I, my kids are of an age where they're getting interested in TV shows and and music, and so sometimes I've got to like, okay, is this one safe or not? Like, my wife and I are listening to music today, and we're like looking like, uh, the kids went over here this one. Let's go ahead and skip this album. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, I I always kind of felt like it would be, you know, I kind of wanted to create, you know, we're not like overtly like more man, you know, we're not singing stuff all the time. We just sing really positive songs for gen- yeah you know, generally. But I kind of wanted to create a counterculture, you know, something that was like, you know, good music that was good that people could really, you know, latch on to. And so that's kind of one thing that I've always kind of, you know, strived to do was just make music that was cool and good, but then also good. And, you know, didn't you yeah. know, you could you could you know, that, play it for your kids. That's an important like that. balance right there, because sometimes the stuff that's like, oh, this is appropriate, but it's awful. <laughs> um, and so having that balance is really cool. Um, you know, speaking of things that are good, this lesson, we're all in lesson 24, which is the atonement of Jesus Christ, vast in its reach, intimate in its effects. It's a really long title. Um, but I think it's an important point for us to focus on is that, that right now, if you are keeping pace with the lessons, you know, if you have a ward conference or state conference, you skip that lesson, you're going to finish lesson 24 right before Christmas. Um, and so I, I think it's a great time for us to just think about Jesus Christ and his atonement and why we celebrate Christmas, why it's so important. I love here um, in the lesson, President Hinckley, he talks about, let me see if I can find the exact quote from him. It's down in section three of the lesson. But basically he says that there would be no Christmas if there had been, not been Easter. The babe Jesus of Bethlehem would be but another baby without the redeeming Christ of Gethsemane and Calvary and the triumphant fact of the resurrection. And so it's really important that Christmas is important not because Jesus was born, but Christmas is important because of the atonement, because of his death and his resurrection. And I just think it's so important we remember that that connection as well and why it's it's important. Um, Ryan, what's that to you in the lesson? You know, what's funny is that when I looked through the lesson, that was the same one that I saw. I was like, that is a really <laughs> cool quote. And I was like, you know, you, you know, before the before we started doing this, you, you know, uh, for all of you who don't know, he said, you know, pick out a couple things that, you know, kind of stand out to you, which is funny that that's the exact one I picked out. <laughs> I thought it was, yeah, it was such an interesting quote that there wouldn't be, you know, Christmas without, without, without Easter. I, I kind of think that, you know, a lot of times uh, we kind of shy away from, um, you know, having Christmas be Christ-centered, at least in the world, which I think is so so strange. You know, like I we we've done we got these Christmas shows coming up, and people will say, you know, we we want to be careful not to like make it too you know, uh, you know, Christian or whatever. And I'm like, but it's Christmas. I mean, 
That's yeah. That's that's the whole point. If you change the emphasis, it'd be Christmas, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's just so <laughs> strange that you know we've we've kind of gotten away from it being about Christ, and so um, so yeah, I think it's you know I think every Christmas you know it's really important, you know, and we, you know, I, I don't know, I may be getting off tangent here, but what, <laughs> one thing we do every year, which is kind of fun, that we've started a tradition is we do what we call the Bethlehem dinner. And so we mm-hmm. get together with my, you know, with some of our family, my, my, my parents come down and we um, eat food that we kind of think they would have eaten. I mean, probably our food's a little more fancy, but <laughs> you know, we eat fish and olives and, you know, things that they would do. But the purpose is just to remind our kids that, you know, we're, the reason why we have Christmas is because of, of Christ and the atonement and, and one of the reasons why we give gifts is because we got the best and most amazing gift of all, which is the gift of salvation. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, I was really surprised. I remember Michael Buble did a, a Christmas uh, special on TV. And I was pretty excited. You know, I, I like kind of some of that crooning music. And I think he's really talented. And they were all like winter songs. Like none of them mentioned Christ at all. And I'm just like, okay. Who was behind that? Because that, like, that's, that doesn't happen on accident. You know, if you, right. you, you know, if you throw every single Christmas song on a board and close your eyes and throw like, you know, nine darts, whatever, however many songs he's saying, one of them's gonna land on a song about Christ. It's just the way it works. And so I think it's important that we, you know, we don't lose sight of that. And I love with Christmas time is that there is a lot of goodwill. You know, there's a lot of good messages out there. There's Christmas specials about family and kindness. Um, and what I love is at this time of the year. You know, we get to remember the Savior and 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 do that kindness. You know, a lot of people are doing like Messiah sing-alongs and and Messiah concerts. And I love in Messiah um, the section where it, it quotes Isaiah, and he talks about how um, you know he's borne our griefs and uh, or is, he even quotes it here. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Uh, President Hinckley says that this is the wondrous and true story of Christmas. The birth of Jesus in Bethlehem of Judea is preface. The three-year ministry of the Master is prologue. The magnificent substance of the story of his sacrifice, the totally selfless act of dying in pain on the cross of Calvary to atone for the sins of all of us. And the epilogue is the miracle of the resurrection. You know, I want to talk just a little bit about light the world right now because I think that's the piece where we focus a little bit on that that prologue, um, that area where Christ went about doing good, and that we can help with the same kind of you know love that He did by going out and doing good as well. Um, you know, have you been reading about some of the prompts they they are giving us for light the world this year, Ryan? Yeah, they give you know a certain scripture a day. They it seems like they used to. What I heard is they used to tell you to go do something. And now they're giving the scriptures that would inspire you to do something along those lines, right? Um, and I think it's such a good, uh, you know, I had seen it before, but I didn't pay as close of attention to it as I have this year. Um, mm-hmm. And because, you know, because we're involved with it now this year, trying to help spread the word through our concerts and stuff. But I think it's such a cool idea, you know, uh, when that it's just, uh, you know, go out, serve someone. I mean... A lot of people have families, but a lot of people maybe don't, and then they're you know kind of feeling a little left out. So I think it's really important for us to remember to serve people at this time of year. And um, you know, I just thought it was such a cool thing. Just it was it, it it wasn't anything else but just serve someone and and you know hashtag light the world and send that out. And hopefully, you know, this will continue to grow and we'll you know we'll see you know a movement. And like I say, it's kind of like the counterculture. It's important for us to create as members of the church, a counterculture that will create good things, you know, as opposed, yeah. as opposed and to just that. that. And saying like, you know, that the, the reason that we're doing these good things is because of Jesus Christ. You know, we want to, we want to light the world. Um, you know, I always, it's funny cause you know, you know, in the scriptures, it talks about how, you know, Jesus Christ is the light of the world. Um, but then Jesus Christ says that, that, you know, we are the light of the world. And I, and I, I, I never want to like make, make that mistake of distinction that we're doing these things to draw attention to ourselves. We're almost like a, a reflecting mirror. 
you know, sometimes we do things that are good. We want we want to share and say, hey, let's do good things together. But any light that goes on us, we should be reflecting back to the Savior to say, this is where the light's coming from. It's not coming from me. I'm not the source. The Savior is why I'm doing kind things. I'm doing things because I love him and I want to follow his example. Yeah, that is interesting because, you know, there is, you know, obviously there's lots of things that apply in multiple ways. So, yeah, he's the light of the world. And then they also say, you know, let your light shine. Don't hide your light under a bushel, right? And then, you know, mm -hmm. you always you always hear when you see people, uh, you know, they say, oh, I could just tell by the light in your eye, you know, like and you're kind of and if you think about it, it's like, well, we don't have a light in our eye, you know, like, but there's something about it that the only way we can describe it is a light. You know, you see someone and you're like, well, you know, there's something about them. That there's some kind of light. <laughs> in fact, which is strange, um, we, uh, you know, and we would tour around a lot. And one time we had this bus driver, you know, and he was just he was, he was driving the bus for us. And uh, we were going around to all these different radio stations and playing all these things all over the country, right? And the bus driver, you know, he was he was a bus driver for all these big bands, you know, and uh, just happened to be the bus driver for us. So mm -hmm. uh, we we came in and played this show, and he, you know, for that particular moment, he came in and wanted to watch us do a little showcase. All we would do is walk in and play, you know, four songs, and then we'd say, hey, you know, you know, it was kind of like, play our songs, and they'd say, like, sweet, we will, and then we'd leave. <laughs> So then the, but the bus driver came up after and he was just saying, you know, that was, there's something about you guys. I just, I just can't describe it. It's like, it's kind of like there's a light, you know, around you guys, or there's a light with you or, you know, something like that. I thought it was so interesting that that's how he described it, you know, but, um, so, you know, so that's really cool that, uh, you know, we were able to be a part of that, you know, um, and kind of hopefully maybe do a little bit of missionary work like that, you know. Yeah, it's funny. But it's, it's, it, but it's that light theme, you know. Yeah, Again. it's it's you know that that light that comes from Jesus Christ, and you know it's always funny. I'll, I'll have people that like you know they find out that I, I'm Mormon. They're like, ah, okay, now now it all makes sense. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, and I I think it's a compliment. I, I take it as a compliment. <laughs> um, that is probably a compliment. That's that's good. Yeah. Oh, that makes sense. It's because you're yeah, so exactly. nice. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. See, for me, they say you're you're Mormon. Oh my, what? <laughs> no, I'm just so like, no. does your bishop know that you're? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wait, no, no, and <laughs> no. Well, yeah, it is kind of funny. Sometimes when we go back east, we'll say like, "Wait, you're Mormon? How could you be Mormon? You're playing in a band." And I just think it's so strange. You, you have a string instrument. Like, I always. Yeah, I'll I'll say I think you confuse yeah. him as with the Amish, but you know. Like, yeah. Anyway, keep with that. We dig. It's a we natural digress, conversation. Right? You know, you guys yeah. might even see this in your own classes where all of a sudden you know you might be preparing a lesson for one topic and you end up teaching totally different topics because that's where this conversation is going and it's going well. So that's kind of what happens with me. Usually, it never ends up being where it's supposed to be. It always goes <laughs> to some other spot. So yeah, so, you know, well, that's are, good. Any other thoughts you had on the be. lesson in particular? Well, when, when you know you were you were saying, look at a couple of things that kind of stick out to me. Uh, the uh, I actually went to a family. The reason why I was a little bit late getting on our thing is because today I went to a family. Uh, I, I had uh, someone in my family who passed away, and so we went to the funeral. And um, so when I was looking through the manual. Uh, I saw, you know, about the resurrection, and then, you know, the, one of the quotes, one of the, at the end of it was, "Towering above all mankind stands G Jesus the Christ." And uh, before that, they were talking about whenever the cold hand of death strikes, you know, there shines to the gloom, and uh, you know, uh, he's the redeemer, and he, you know, and so it was kind of talking about how, you know, he triumphed over, uh, you know, over death, and then the resurrection, and I, I, and today there was a kind of a theme at this. At this funeral that we went to, because um, uh, they, the, one thing that happened, it was to, to my uncle is he he got injured and he he for a while he was kind of in he couldn't really like function as well as he could. So one of the main themes was that I know that we'll see him again and he'll be back to his his to the original you know form and the original you know the the old way that we knew him you know. And um, so when I read that, I was kind of reminded of that, and I think that that. The atonement is like this sometimes a nebulous concept to us because it's like, you know, he knows everything and he suffered everything and he 
took upon him all these things and really there's it's like there's almost no way really we can yeah. fathom that right it's like at least me no you're I'm not you're not alone more you're not alone <laughs> than other people you know i mean it's just it's just like it's just amazing and there's no way to even understand it and um and so that's just but the other side of it sometimes is a little more maybe not easy to understand why it happens but easy to kind of pinpoint because you just go you see yourself like oh man you know i remember when i used to be able to run with a you know free and now i hurt my knee and now it's always kind of bugging me and so it's a little more like immediate you kind of can see that oh man when i'm resurrected i'm going to be you know everything's going to be restored to my proper you know frame which is a good question because my wife sometimes says i hope you do not come back with hair because i like you more well you know what there's people hair. that have a full head of hair that say, shave it off so well honey i mean yeah <laughs> hair i mean like, who doesn't want a full head of hair right so i don't know i don't know will i come back as the 20 year old ryan with a full head of flowing strawberry blonde hair or will i be the 30 year old ryan that has a nice sleek <laughs> it says it's not going to be hair lost know. so maybe you just I... keep it in a bag um <laughs> like i've got them all <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but anyway, so I think the resurrection is something that, you know, when little kids, it, it's the kind of the concept when you talk to little kids, you know, they understand that, well, you know, you know, your dog died or, you know, you tell those things, but then he'll be in heaven and he'll. And so resurrection is something a little more tangible that, you know, we can kind of see. Um, and I mean, it's still obviously um, totally amazing, but that's the other part of it that I, I think is is pretty it's it's pretty interesting yeah. and, and kind well, of amazing, and so with with the holidays, a lot of times when we lose a loved one they get really hard because, you know, there's memories and there's tradition. And when there's someone that's key in our lives that's now missing, um, there's a void that's there. And that's why I love that this lesson talks about those those words from Isaiah, the idea that Jesus Christ knows how to, how to succor us. You know, during this time, if we focus on what's missing in our lives by that loved one who isn't here with us right now, it can be really hard to get through the holidays. Um, I know when my mom, my grandma passed away, you know, my mom had a hard time with that and it was really missing her because – you know, Christmas was a really big tradition. We all went to Grandma Cleveland's house for, for Christmas Day, and, and now that tradition was changed. But when we instead take some time and focus on the Savior, um, you know, act as he would act, and let his atonement heal us, you know, it could be a wonderful blessing to have this Christmas time for us to focus on these things. You know, as you go out and light the world, as you, you know, um, go and help somebody in need, feed feed the hungry, clothe the naked, all of those prompts that um, you can see, uh, it, it fills that void and it fills you with the light of Christ and, and it helps you to be healed. And so I think this is a, a, a really great lesson and, and it's something that, you know, you can share right now, even though it's Christmas time and it's a perfect fit with, with the, uh, with what we have going on. But, you know, Ryan, speaking of Christmas time and light the world, I know you've got a concert series coming up. Why don't you tell us a little bit about that? Um, well, we uh, we've kind of expanded our Christmas shows. In the past, we've we've slowly kind of built up. This year, we're playing um, a bunch of them. We're playing in, uh, up in Idaho, one show at uh, in Aramo, which you know our sound guy was like, "Aramo, <laughs> there ain't nothing in Aramo." It's like, well, there is a performing arts center there, and it's pretty awesome. So people from Pocatello can come down. Anyway, but then we're also doing a show in um, in Logan, in Ogden, which is happening on Saturday, November twenty fifth. I they don't should. know if people will see this before then, but. Uh, and then uh, we have the Provo at the Covey Center. We're playing up in Logan at Logan uh, High Auditorium. Then we're playing in uh, uh, Midway at the Zermatt Resort. And then we're playing uh, in Ephraim and then in St. George at Dixie High School. So we have a, we have a bunch of shows. And, um, you know, I used to – seems like for a while, uh, before we even started doing Christmas shows, it was almost like I was just kind of, you know, running around. It was kind of before I was – I was married, and all of us. It would seem like every Christmas it would be like, wait, Christmas is like in two days. Like, I just forgot about it, you know. And so I, I kind of really like playing the Christmas shows because it's like it, it gets me into the Christmas spirit, and it, it makes it last longer. Like I don't like it to come to an end, you know. It's like this fun time leading up to it, and so, um, so that's the one thing I really love about the Christmas shows. So I mean, if people get a chance to come to the show, they won't be disappointed. It's really fun. It's very joyous. Um, it's you know, it's just a it's a good time. Nice. It's good for the yeah, whole family. 
uh, you know, we have a lot of families that have traditions where they come to our show, and so we keep trying to build that up. That's and keep awesome. Growing until yeah, that's I awesome. sing in a in two choirs this Christmas. I have uh, a concert. Uh, I guess I have two concerts the week after Thanksgiving, and and they're both very different. One is cinematic pop, which is like poppy music, that's kind of with with orchestra score, and then the millennial choirs and orchestras, which is which is grand choral music. But so I've been singing Christmas music for the past two months, like. I am already like full blown Christmas oh, yeah. mode, and we haven't even hit December yet. And so, um, yeah, I, I know how you feel. It's it's I love those like just stretching out this time because I I love Christmas. Like I like Buddy the Elf. I totally resonate with that whole idea um, of loving Christmas. And so I'm super excited. Now I I was yeah. on your Facebook uh, today, and I know you've got some some contests going on right now in con- conjunction with your concerts. Yeah, we do have a really cool contest, uh, and this is in conjunction with Light the World, which is a really, you know, and they call it Light the World Service Initiative because it's a doing service. And so what we're doing is we're picking uh, 10 to 15 pairs of tickets, and uh, in conjunction with uh, Light the World, we're giving those away. Uh, and to enter to win those, you know, basically to win the, the ticket, the opportunity to get the tickets, uh, you know, what we're encouraging people to do is to do service because, you know, holiday season is a time of, se- of service. So go do something, find something to do uh, for someone else, something really good. Uh, you know, who knows what it could be? It could be like baking cookies for someone in the ward or, it could be, <laughs> yeah, you know, anything like everybody has. You know, it could be volunteering down at the, you know, somewhere where you need to volunteer or someone that needs help. But anyway, so, you know, take a video of that on a picture or a picture, you know, and document it and then post that up to uh, social media. And then what we what you do is you hashtag light the world. And then you also hashtag Ryan Shoop and then whatever concert you want to go to. So it'll be Ryan Shoop Logan or Ryan Shoop Ephraim or Ryan Shoop, you know, Ogden. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go back and look at all those. And then we'll, you know, and then we'll kind of pick out the winners and nice. then we'll give the tickets. And so, I mean, maybe you should, you know, I'm not saying this is how we're going to test, but if you just say, yeah, I helped uh, my sister, you know, pick a pencil up off the floor. Then we might be like, eh, that wasn't very... They got, the, they got the hashtags in there. <laughs> so, <and> they, <laughs> yeah, they got the hashtags. But, you know, you know, so I don't know. May, but maybe if you, like, you know, you know, volunteered for five hours down at the, you know, something, you'd be like, whoa, now that guy really deserves a ticket. So I'm not exactly sure how we're going to pick him out, but... I'm not. I'm not totally the one in charge, but I would. I would imagine that they're probably going to look at that and say, "Now that guy, now he did." It's got to be some bona fide service. Like I get what you're saying there. <laughs> um, well, I mean, you know, no service. You know, every service is right <laughs> good, but uh, you know, you know, I don't know. Maybe it'll just be like uh, we'll just throw them all in a hat and pick one. You'll never know unless you guys service, enter. So. <laughs> but regardless, yeah. Regardless, the truth is. Even if you don't win, you're doing something great for someone. During Everybody the wins, season, right? It's like Everybody such wins a in great case. idea. <laughs> Everybody wins. You Even win if something you don't else. Get tickets, you win because you. <laughs> well, I'll put links exactly. to that in the show notes. So if you guys go to this dash Mormon dash life dot com, you can have show. Oh, there'll be notes there. How to enter the contest? How to be part of that? In case you weren't quite sure where to find those things, um, as well as I'll have a link to a calendar we created. We. We know there's a lot of content that gets produced for Light the World, and it's wonderful, and we love it all. But sometimes it can be a little bit overwhelming to make sure that we're being involved in the initiative, but not getting overwhelmed. And so I made a Google Calendar where you can subscribe to the calendar, and then you open up your phone, and you can see all the prompts for that day, as well as see other uh, content creators that have made good supplemental content that can help you get more out of Light the World. And so if you're not sure how or what type of service you want to do, Maybe go check out that calendar and see what the ideas that are on there and do them a few weeks early. So, um, yeah, I mean, you know, I probably could use some like Cafe Rio gift cards. So, you know, <laughs> drop those off at my house and then hashtag <laughs> let the world. And, and, no, I'm not. Yeah, bri- bribe you, bribing no, service. Uh, yeah, that's the way no, you get in there. <laughs> No, that's a really good idea to get the calendar out to kind of, you know, because you're right. Sometimes it could be a little overwhelming. Like, what? what yeah. So that's, and like that's that stress of like going back to like the that. website every day and where, where is it at? Where, what's the URL for today? And I just thought, you know, if I can put it all in one spot, I think that would make it easier for everyone involved and um, and make it so it's it's wonderful and it's immense, yeah. but it doesn't need to be overwhelming. Yeah. Well, yeah, thanks, guys, for joining idea. us for this episode. Um, thanks, Ryan, for joining me as well. This has been great. 
Um, if you guys are loving these podcast episodes, it helps you get ready for your lesson or it helps you to get more from the lesson or it helps you to get from the lesson that you missed, uh, go ahead and tell a friend. Let somebody know. Give us comments. Uh, YouTube has been great for comments. Thank you guys for that. Um, but even comments in the show notes, comments on our Facebook posts. Like whenever I get discouraged, I will go back and I have a collection of all these comments that you guys are leaving. So thank you for that. Um, it really means a lot to us. And then also, you know, as you guys are, are seeing these things, give me some ideas because next year things are going to change up because we're not having a teaching to the presence of the church. We're just going to do straight up teaching help. If there's a topic that you need help on, if you're struggling as a teacher, um, let me know what you need. And so we'll start creating content for that. Um, similar format as this year, but just kind of more broad in our scope and so that you can enjoy the lessons anytime and not have, feel like there's a, there's a pressure of, of watching them before you have your lesson. You can watch them anytime. So on behalf of Ryan Shoup, my name is Grady of This Woman Life, and we wish you all a fond adieu. So I hope yeah, you guys like that episode. If you want, you can find more episodes of the podcast right over here. Uh, you can also find stuff over here of some recent videos and some of our most popular ones. And then also right here, you can find out how you can subscribe to get updates of when the next videos are available. We'll have more podcast episodes. We'll be talking about how to be a better teacher. We'll have some movie reviews on here. Even some commentaries of things that we think are important to us, and hopefully they'll be important to you. Thanks a lot, guys.